Hey guys, I'm at the Las Vegas Strip right now, and you know there's plenty to look at out here. But just like the beautiful lights of Las Vegas, those who are new to the Doberman breed and see their first all-white Doberman are often enamored by the glitz and the glamour of it. But, also like Las Vegas, there's a whole lot more going on with the white Doberman than just what you see on the surface. So, let's get out of here and let's talk about the rare, all-white Doberman. I've gotten just a ton of comments from you guys asking me to do a video about the white Doberman. Like this one right here, for example. Or this one. Or this one. Or all of these. So. You know, I've kind of come to realize I work for you guys, my subscribers, and this is what you want to see, so I'm making the video just for you. First off, what are these guys? Are they albinos? Are they white dogs? What are they? Well, these dogs are actually technically kind of a light cream color. They do still have lighter colored spots in the areas that most Dobermans have those rust colored spots, uh, namely on the muzzle, on the throat, chest, legs, and just beneath the tail. Well, these dogs aren't technically like that full classic albino that you're usually used to seeing. Um, when you think of an albino, you probably think of the bleach white color with the pink eyes. Well, that's not these dogs. These dogs have a light cream color to their fur, and they also have blue eyes. Both of those things take pigment to produce. So they're not that classic full albino like you might think of. The, the technical term is tyrosinase positive albinoids. But that's pretty long and complicated. It's probably better you could either just refer to them as a white Doberman or a cream colored Doberman. For the sake of this video, I'm going to be referring to them as white Dobermans. Now, where in the world did this white colored Doberman come from? Well, on November 10th, 1976, the Doberman world was just thrown on its head when an all white Doberman named Padula's Queen Sheba was born, or just Sheba for short, was born to two black and rust colored Doberman parents. Uh, now, initially, the AKC and the DPCA Doberman Pinscher Club of America um, completely doubted whether or not that this was even a purebred Doberman at all. Uh, but when the owner requested to register the dog as a purebred Doberman and they did an investigation into it, they found that yes, she was a purebred Doberman and they had to allow her to register her as a purebred. Now, uh, Sheba was the first documented case that we have of the white Doberman, although she had to have not been the absolute first one ever born. Something interesting was written on her pedigree. Written on Sheba's pedigree are the words, first white Doberman not put to sleep. So although she's the first one we have an official record of, it sounds like there were some before her. And frankly, there had to be because in order for her to be produced, both of her parents had to have had that recessive gene mutation to create her. And uh, Sheba went on to be bred with her son and her son, unfortunately, was bred to his sisters uh, in an attempt by the breeders to kind of lock in this mutation to continue to make white colored Dobermans. So how is the all-white Doberman even genetically possible? Well, the white Doberman has a genetic mutation in a separate gene called the SLC45A2 gene. Um, and basically just a chunk of that gene's genetic code is missing. And this causes kind of a masking effect to occur, right? And so the white color masks what other color would have normally been produced. And this form of albinism, again, is not the classic form, but it, because it, there is some pigment. Um, that's not the pink eyes, but it produces a dog with blue eyes, pink nose, pink uh, lips and eye rims, um, which is the white Doberman as we now know it. Now, this is very similar or almost the exact same deletion that has occurred in other animals in the wild. And those animals are officially affected by something called OCA4 albinism, or which stands for this word right here. Nope, I'm not gonna try and pronounce it for you, don't ask. Now, a lot of you ask me what prices these white Dobermans go for, and it completely varies all over the place. But um, I talked to a whole bunch of white Doberman owners, and I even called up a few alternative color breeders that breed these white Dobermans uh, before making this video to kind of find out what prices uh, were was typical. And I kind of found a, a big range between $800 for a puppy up to $2,500. Um, it can even vary from there even a little bit further. Um, the average price I saw was around $1,600 for a puppy. Let's touch real briefly on the health concerns of these white Dobermans. The first one is they have less pigment, so out in the sun they are more prone to getting sunburn. 
a lot of Doberman owners that own these white dogs will put some dog safe sunblock on their nose, especially because their nose is exposed a lot to the sun. Um, and, or they'll just limit their time out in the sun. Uh, in addition to that, they are more prone to skin tumors. Now, um, probably because they're more prone to being sunburned, but there was a study back in 2014, I believe, that, uh, and I'll link to it in my article about this topic in the description below, but that showed, that took 20 Dobermans that were white colored Dobermans and 20 standard colored Dobermans and compared the two and found that only one out of 20 standard colored Dobermans had a skin tumor present, whereas 12 of the 20 white Dobermans had skin tumors present. And in fact, every white Doberman over the age of five had skin tumors. Um, now it's worth noting that these skin tumors may be cancerous, but they also could be benign as well. Um, in addition, there could be some vision concerns as well as far as in bright light, especially you'll see these dogs squinting a lot more in bright light because they have less pigment in their eyes. So more of the sunlight reaches their retina and they're a little bit more likely to uh, be squinting out there in the bright sun. But other than those three main points, they are also just affected by every other standard um, health condition that most Dobermans are, uh, are kind of prone to. Now here's the best part of the video, guys. Here's where I'm gonna lay out the whole controversy for you. I'm gonna give you the main arguments both for owning and continuing to own and breed these dogs and against continuing to own and breed these dogs. So that way you can decide for yourselves if uh, continuing to breed these dogs and having these dogs in existence is ethical and moral or if it's not. First up are all the arguments for continuing to breed and own these dogs. Uh, the first main point that a lot of people for this will argue is in reference to the albino status of these dogs. They'll say that they are not true full albinos and uh, because they do have some pigmentation and that the people that continue to refer to them as albinos are actually just trying to uh, cast a negative light and uh, enhance the stigma around them as having tons of health problems when that may not be necessarily true. The second point often argued by those that are for breeding these dogs has to do with their general health. They'll state that alternative color breeders who are reputable um, know that there's such a stigma around the white Dobermans as being unhealthy that they will actually even go further with genetic testing both before um, dogs are bred and then afterwards on the puppies themselves so that white Dobermans maybe even undergo more health tests to make sure they're healthy than your standard colored Dobermans are likely to undergo. Number three has to do with inbreeding. Although they will concede that there was definitely inbreeding in the beginning with Sheba, that first uh, white Doberman that I told you about, they will state that uh, inbreeding in recent generations is really an unknown. They'll also point to a lot of uh, potential issues with uh, genetic bottlenecks and inbreedings with uh, some of the championship lines out there with American Dobermans. Um, and there are some experts that are worried about those genetic bottlenecks and they'll say that those ones are as bad or even worse than the white Dobermans uh, potential genetic bottlenecks. They'll also say that any inbreeding that goes on in the white Doberman line is just a function of an unethical breeder, which happens with all types of Dobermans and is not a function of the coat of, or the color of the Doberman. Number four has to do with skin problems. A lot of people will say that the white Doberman just has too many skin problems. Well, um, the people for breeding these dogs will say that really the blue and the fawn colored Dobermans, which are considered standard colors by the DPCA, have as many, if not more, skin issues than the white colored Doberman. Number five has to do with temperament. Um, now, they'll say that the uh, white colored Doberman's temperament, if it's at all affected by any poor genetics, that is a result of, again, an unethical breeder which exists with all different colors of Dobermans and not an, a result of just the Doberman being white in color. The next one is photosensitivity or the issues with the bright light. Um, now, they'll say that blue-eyed animals and people are more likely to squint in bright sunlight than those with brown eyes or darker colored eyes. And they'll say that in the animal world or even the people world, blue eyes is not considered a defect and therefore it shouldn't be considered a defect in the Doberman world either. Now, the last argument they'll make has to do with eyesight issues with the white Doberman. They'll point out uh, many white Doberman owners who will take their dogs to get CERF certified, which is Canine Eye Registration Foundation certified. And this, uh, what they do with that testing is they make sure the dog is free from a long list of inherited uh, defects in the eyes to prove that they have good vision. And these white Dobermans will pass that test with no issue. Now for the arguments of those who are against breeding or continuing to own these white Dobermans and think that it's unethical or even immoral. The first argument has to do with the albino status of these dogs. They'll argue that that gene mutation I mentioned to you earlier, which creates the OCA type four albinoism is absolutely one of the forms of albino and that not all albinos have pink eyes. Um, and they will say that is definitely, since it's a type of albinoism, it should be called such. These dogs should be referred to as albino Dobermans. 
The second point has to do with her general health. And they will argue that these dogs are just more exposed to sunburns, more exposed to uh, a cancer as a result of that, um, and other health issues just as a result of being an albino Doberman. The third main argument has to do with inbreeding. They'll say that not only did the white Doberman start with excessive amounts of inbreeding initially with Sheba and her first descendants, but that inbreeding continues today. Um, if nothing else, just because the extremely limited stock that's available out there of these white Dobermans, they'll say that, uh, that inbreeding is almost uh, impossible to uh, avoid. Number four has to do with temperament. And uh, they will argue that these dogs have many temperamental issues due to this inbreeding. And also just because of the limited stock or limited number of white Dobermans that are out there, that these breeders who are breeding for this color um, will often just match two dogs together that have this gene so they can produce the white Dobermans and who aren't necessarily a good temperamental match for each other. The fifth common argument has to do with eyesight issues. They'll say that these albinos have definite eyesight issues, the photosensitivity in the bright light, and also potentially other eyesight issues. And this can lead to fear biting because they can't properly make out what's in front of them. Um, they'll also say that the CERF certification that I mentioned earlier, which a lot of the uh, pro white Dobermans point to as an example of why their dogs have great eyesight, that those, that testing does not actually prove they have good eyesight, it just proves that they have, um, are not affected by some inherited condition. So they'll say like nearsightedness, farsightedness, and a bunch of other issues will not be detected in that CERF certification. And the last and one of the biggest arguments that they'll often make against these white Dobermans is that owning one of these just takes a much bigger commitment of both time and potentially money for medical issues. Time because you might have to put sunscreen on them or watch them in the sun or even put clothes on them to keep the sun off them and money for medical issues that could crop up and that they may have more medical concerns than the standard colors of dogs. And because of that, they will argue that these dogs are a lot more likely to end up in uh, dog rescue centers. So after hearing both the arguments for and against these white dogs, what do you guys think? Do you think that the stigma around the white Dobermans has been blown up out of control and they don't deserve it? Or do you think uh, these dogs are kind of like Las Vegas where it's uh, all glitz and glamor on the outside and kind of sin city underneath? Well, leave a comment down below. Let's get this conversation going. Uh, don't forget to be respectful with each other, guys. Continue being that great breed ambassadors that I know you guys are. And uh, hit the subscribe button while you're here and thumbs up button. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching.